a last name. That's the first thing that caught my eye among the shelves of that bookstore one winter afternoon. The book seemed used. It had worn out yellow pages. One of them had handwritten notes on it. The person who had written them, I assumed, had been particularly touched by what they'd read. It was a book by Isaac Bashevis Singer, the Yiddish writer who in 1978 had won the Nobel Prize in Literature. It had been several years since I'd read something by him. I'd forgotten him, unjustly so. He was one of the first writers I read when I arrived in the city. He'd come to me by chance, just like today. I was very young and didn't have papers. I had no steady place to live and earn my living as I could. <coughs> One morning while sitting on a bench, without a dime, barely any sleep, tired of so many things, but especially of myself, a beggar approached me. He confused me with many that wander that part of the city. He offered me breakfast, those that are handed out by the local churches. I was very hungry. So I accepted it. Before he left, he paused for a moment and searched among his things. That man gave me a book. I read Isaac Bashevis Singer on the cover. It was a book of short stories. <coughs> that afternoon, a small urban miracle had occurred. The kind that happens from time to time. I had a hot plate of food, and I had discovered a writer. I passionately read all the stories, but one in particular was my favorite. It was called Alone. The protagonist was a man on vacation in Miami Beach who was traveling alone irritated by tourists going in and out of the hotel with their pets, as well as the employees' incompetence. The only thing he wanted was to be completely isolated from the world. He begs God to listen and goes off to his room. The man wakes up the next day, somewhat out of place. He doesn't know how long he slept. He gets up and realizes that his wishes have come true. There was not a single soul in the hotel. I also wanted to be completely alone. But like in the story, things don't always go as you think. Sometimes they go much better. Miami's residents braced themselves for the storm on Thursday. General evacuation order, Florida and South Carolina. As well as Later, by a writer friend, I found out that this was one of the first stories that Singer based in the United States. A country where he had arrived in 1935 from Poland at a time when the world was full of intolerance and Nazism was a plague that would quickly spread to the rest of Europe. 
Isaac Bashevis Singer used to split his new American life between New York City and Miami. The writer liked to eat in cafeterias along Washington Avenue because they produced certain nostalgia from the ones in Warsaw where he would get together with all kinds of people. In Miami Beach, there were other immigrant Jews who spoke his language. And unlike in New York, in these cafeterias and hotel lobbies, the writer would hear in a variety of Yiddish dialects those stories and jokes from his homeland that had survived uprooting. That book with handwritten notes on its pages had one last surprise. In several of the margins, there were annotations. I wanted to decipher what they said, but I didn't understand the language in which they were written. I was only able to make out an address. Isaac Bashevis Singer died on July 24, 1991, at 87 in Miami. A city that he enjoyed so much because of its people, its stories, and its weather. Here, he was able to take back some of that youthful spirit left behind in Poland. His headstone, however, is not in Miami. His body was laid to rest in a Jewish cemetery in New Jersey. Maybe there's some irony to that. But that barely matters. Headstones aren't necessary to honor his memory. He left behind his stories and his novels where the characters either invoke or curse God while reflecting about passion, shame, pride, life. There is an air of folk tales that include ghosts and demons, but without much moral burden. His headstone isn't in Miami, but there is something better. Every day he came down from his apartment at 9511 in Collins and sat on the beach to see the ocean, the seagulls, the waves, while waiting for some revelation. This is what Isaac Bashevis Singer saw every day. An immense, radiant sea that brings men and women from different cultures, using their stories as their passports, making us think about how fragile and endless the world is. <laughs>